welcome to the Expo Hall at NFT NYC. Hey, hey, cheers, Twitter. So, like, we're here at NFT NYC 2024. Everyone's so involved in what was in 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. But I've got a really interesting take. I'd love you to come and join me and we'll discuss about what's going to be from 24 and onwards. Everybody knows, right? AI is here and it's not going anywhere. For all you know, I'm AI. I'm Helena. I'm so excited to be here at NFT at my team. This is my third time. Here with my friend Spring Roll, but he's not going to be showing his face because he likes to keep things a little private. So tell us about what you're speaking about here at NFT NYC. Twitter is where you get your initial hype, where you're also able to get your core community members, for example, through the Twitter groups. Yep. But eventually you're bound to go into the Discord chat, mainly because of the fact you're able to exchange more information in both. But also you have that VC element where it's private. So we were speaking about like promoting brands through NFTs. In Europe, there is legislation that you have to digitize all your clothes. It's related to fighting the counterfeit and all this stuff. So there's a bunch of opportunities. Most of the people within the community have been curated for the past two years. We've met them either through Discord, I see. or Telegram, Twitter, or at events. Two years ago, it was at NFT NYC. From there was NFT Lisbon. From there was NFT Paris. Met all these great people. I thought to myself, these resonate with me well. Yeah. These guys don't. So these guys I will have in my community and I will work with. And it has created both friendship and business opportunities alike. Um, I've had a couple of companies before this, and when I decided to get into crypto, I went down the rabbit hole of YouTube, I went down the rabbit hole of really understanding everything for a good maybe four to six months before I even stepped foot into any of these places, right? I mean, here, I get to talk to founders on a daily basis. Yeah. That's all I do, that's what I love to do. Yeah. Come to me, tell me your idea before you put anything down on paper, because that way I can guide you through it. It was amazing to see your artwork up on the Times Square billboard last Thank night. You. It's a huge thrill. When I see my art that goes from my computer onto a screen, onto a canvas, like the thrill of seeing your art out in the world where everybody can, can see what you've created because behind that, there's like a whole process. It's like blood, sweat and tears, right? And being here at NFT NYC, it's just amazing because I feel like I do a lot of digital art and I feel that my art has finally found a home. And we are trying to solve one big problem. Artists can't make money from their art. They can't make a living. It's a free education for, for now because I want to make a name for myself that I'm the guy who can get the artist who doesn't know about NFTs, that's making money with NFTs, doesn't need second or third job that we see common in art. It's just pure happiness, I would say. So we just talked about uh, promoting brand products to NFTs. It's great to be here again in New York, Mikey. Yay. 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 And we get to get share a conversation here at the news desk. And we're going to admit that conversation with our photograph and what we're talking about on OpenSea and Rarible. I'm helping onboarding artists who want to learn about NFTs. I think NFTs can help there. And I'm super excited that NFT is still here. It's still happening. Our conversation was minted on OpenSea and Rarible or dropping the tokens into my friend Max's wallet. And we'll be back with another one of these very soon. Until then, peace.